Hello and welcome back Squirrel Nation. Today we are going to dive into the July 23rd update. Um, today's video is going to be different. There's no gameplay included, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to review the patch notes and then I'm also going to give you three builds that I think will do well in the coming meta and I'll kind of explain that at the end of the video. So anyways, to dive into some of the notes, we're just going to kind of skim through them and I'm going to highlight the things that I think are important. Item inheritance is very interesting because what happens is there's a lot more items in the game and basically as players are dying, the other players are getting items quicker. I think the implication to the meta is that it's going to speed up games. So uh, econing forever up to 50 gold, I was already kind of against it. Now I think it's I'm even more against it because the thing is, is when people start to die, the pace of deaths are going to speed up because items can make a huge difference. Another implication is certain comps are going to do even better because of items. So some comps are more item dependent than others. Uh, the example I can give you are mages. If you have mana regen items and a lot of them start to stack up on a mage team, it makes them almost just insta-kill other teams. Another good example would be hunters because they can stack those attack damage, attack speed, those type of things, and they can really, really do a lot of damage in a very small window to a single target. Um, there are other examples. Uh, beast buff will be really well because it scales with attack damage, so if you have a bunch of items that are attack items and then you uh, use the beast synergy, then your damage is going to scale up. Um, the other examples you guys can think of on your own, I just wanted to give a few quick examples. So. The added special effect for win streaks and lose streaks, I think that's really cool. Um, it just makes it easier for you to tell what people are doing, if they are lose streaking or if they're win streaking. So it's just, uh, to me, I think that's a quality of life thing, which I do like because before what you had to do is you had to go spectate every single player and see uh, if they were doing a win streak, lose streak. Now it's much more, it's super simple to tell. And I like that because I think it is going to make the skill cap a lot higher. Uh, players will be able to realize, oh, somebody's doing uh, XYZ, lose streak, win streak. I need to adapt by doing this. So I like that. Uh, the synergies didn't really matter to me. The coupons, that stuff, I don't think really matters for gameplay wise. Uh, that, nope, not a big deal. So the re so they're getting ri rid of Ring of Regen. I'm totally fine with that. It's half as useful um, as the other regen item and it yeah I mean it's just a really insignificant item so removing it I do not think is a big deal changing the recipe same thing it's not a big deal they're just changing the recipe based on the changes okay so here comes another thing guaranteed drops for killing certain monsters so that goes back to the item thing so I think the amount of items that are going to be in game uh, are going to significantly increase and then the amount people get from killing others is obviously going to increase it as well uh, it's just kind of a duplicate. It's a different mechanic for why there's going to be more items, but it, it it's covered in our earlier discussion on items. Um, added class. These are these these are just their basic system to me. I'm not really worried about that. I'm more worried about our gameplay. Okay, these optimizations were insane. This patch is so amazing. The game feels so crisp. That like it is. If you thought it was it, it, like one to ten, if it used to be a five, it's like a nine and a half now. Like it is so nice. I see a huge difference, and I'm not normally somebody who cares about graphics. Like I'm the type of player who I normally turn the graphics to minimum so that I can just have that little bit extra uh, efficiency type of a thing. But these b graphics are so beautiful. They redid some, a lot of the ultimates. For instance, Wind Ranger. Um, I was playing him, his ultimate is beautiful now, and it looks like you can tell what his ultimate hits now, where it used to just kind of be that streak, now it's like this beautiful, I don't, I don't even know what to describe, it looks like some sort of Kamehameha wave, but it, it looks great. Um, the other thing is the game is so much smoother. So I used to play on 60 FPS um, instead of the 45, and it still felt choppy at times, that choppiness is completely gone, like when the heroes move around it is just so nice. Um, so anyways, out of all those, those are the things that I noticed. The other one is this, uh, the star levels. I really like what they did. The star levels, I wasn't a fan when they changed it uh, last patch, or sorry, two patches ago. I wasn't a fan of that, like a lot of people, but now it's actually just something that I think is even better. It's not all the way to what they originally had. Um, it's not that thing we all didn't like, but now it's like this new thing that I think is really good, um, even better than any other iteration of the star level. So I think they're doing a great job on that. Um, 
Yeah, the model, we discussed that already. The days. Yeah, the... Okay, based on the days and stuff, what I'm pretty sure they mean by that is just the mechanic of heroes moving. Like, even the movements on the board just look more crisp. Before, it was kind of like, why is my hero standing there? Why are they, like... Why is one of them standing back and the other one's jumping forward? And, you know, you, you, you kind of feel those weird... Uh, just things kind of stand out as strange in the movement, and now it's really smooth. So that's back to the smoothness. Um, not a big deal for the fixes, and here we go. Okay, so balance changes. The balance changes, Warlock was the weakest, so they updated Warlock. The thing I love about this is they took Warlock from a 3-6 to a 2-4-6 and six for when you get the bonus from the synergy. I love this because... Warlock is not a main synergy, okay? So when I say a main synergy, Feather is a main synergy, Warriors are a main synergy, um, Knights are a main synergy. I think main synergies being three, six, nines is fine because your team is predominantly going to be of that and your team can mainly be focused on those synergies and you, you it will be okay. Now, the support synergies like uh, Beast, Human, Warlock, right? Those type of synergies, if you try to make a team of only Warlocks, like if you ever used to try to go to six Warlocks, your team is going to be garbage because there's just not enough diversity in the Warlock pool. So I really like that they made this change. I don't think anybody's ever going to hit six, but people are going to use two Warlocks a lot more, right? They're going to use, you're going to see a lot more Warlock synergies incorporated into things. And sometimes I can even see people going for four. Um, so I, I, I think that was an outstanding change. Um, Venomancer, this is a pretty nice uh, buff. I didn't get to play with him enough, but he is a hero. To me, his issue has always been that he dies so quickly. It's very hard to position him in such a way that he doesn't take aggro, and he gets his ult off, and then he can kind of start being a monster. But it's just really hard to sit up, set up that perfect situation. And the other thing is he's epic, so you're not getting him until later in the game when, when he can get melted even more. So I think maybe if he was lower cost he would be more usable, if he had more armor he would be usable. Um, I, I don't think this mana regen really changes that. I'm pretty sure he still dies almost as soon as he ults and this type of change doesn't really matter. But with the Warlock changes, that could be different and I need to use him more, that's just my initial impression. Shadow Devil, this is outstanding. I will start using him. So I got away from Shadow Devil because he, he's only going to ult once in a match. And if he's only going to ult once, then the only type of comps you're going to use him in are like AoE, Mage, uh, Big Bang, Burst Damage type comps. Uh, and you would get one out of him, but then his auto attack was always amazing because he has very high DPS. His attack speed is very low and his actual damage per hit is very high, plus he has that demon synergy. So he's really good auto attacker. The problem is he just didn't really fit in either. So with this, I think he fits really, really well into like divinities and mages now. So I, I would have used to, I never used him in divinity before or, or don't get me wrong. I experimented using him, but I didn't like it because even with divinity, he's still only going to alt once. But now in divinity, especially if you have him at two stars, his cooldown and to put it in perspective, uh, Thunder Spirit's cooldown is 10 seconds. So his cooldown at two stars is a little bit higher than Thunder Spirit's, but they can basically keep sinking multiple, or they can keep ulting multiple times in a fight. And I have tried that and it did work really, really well. So anyways, that's that. Kira Mage. This is, may not seem like a lot, but this is a huge buff and is amazing. And you can do a lot of really, so Kira is not something you're taking late game normally unless you're going six mages. But Kira early game can be awesome because the fact that now you're going to target the hero with the highest attack damage, which normally means they have very slow attack speeds. That's how the game kind of balances it. So now his 30% increase is going to be huge. And I'll give you some examples. So say you pair him with a stone spirit. A stone spirit's attack is 1.8. Now, with when Kira ults him, it's going to be 1.2, but Stone Spirit has a huge amount of damage that he does per hit, so that that's like a huge, huge buff. Uh, another good example would be, think of a Shadow Crawler, right? A Shadow Crawler attacks slowly, but has that huge damage modifier, um, and then also is one of the highest base damage, uh, I think only second to Shining Assassin, I believe. So, um, just early game, if you can get like a two-star uh, Kira mage and mix it with maybe some sort of assassins or something like that, 
um, or some of these really slow attack speed, like you are probably going to have see a significant uh, spike in your damage. Okay, so Goblin Race. Um, this this one I'm fine with. I don't really care about it. Goblins are always a risky thing. So if, if goblins are one of those things where if you get to six, you're probably going to take first or second place in a game. But it's do you make it to six? So I think the reason they made this change is it was kind of getting to the point where even if you got to six goblins, you still might not get first or second. You might barely get third because of a lot of divinity mages, those type of things. So my guess is they're they're giving this extra armor just to make sure that goblins still wreck uh, melee comps like assassins, warriors, that type of stuff. Uh, knights. Okay. Anyways, uh, knight nerf so they're bringing down how uh they're bringing down the probability that the knights get the shield uh this is actually pretty significant i think knights knights were a good meta comp they're a meta comp you'll see them in each game but i don't think knights were actually that strong i don't think they were the top uh, most winning most impactful uh team comp honestly for me i personally avoid going knights unless i absolutely am being force fed knights by the game but otherwise, I prefer Divinity a lot more. Um, I prefer, like, most of the Feather stuff. J just there's a lot of other things I would prefer over Knights. So the fact that they kind of nerfed them down here, um, I think that hurts Knights. Uh, oh, okay, but another note I want to make on that is Knights are, some, are, are a comp that they can really scale with items. So I have a feeling that maybe they did this because they know that once... There's more items in the games knights might may kind of blow up uh so and the reason i say that is if you think of berserker light blade knight dragon knight uh even hell knight all of them if they get a lot of certain items they can become extremely scary um devastator nerf to his damage uh i mean it's a nerf i don't think it's a huge deal this strange egg change is very interesting because strange egg the way that i think about strange egg is this strange egg allows you to go for higher cost teams okay so normally i would never put more than three or no more than two epics and i'm even hesitant to put two epics two epics in an eight person team the reason for that is if you require let's say three epics in a team the chance of you getting those to two stars before your health is almost non-existent or you're already out of the game is extremely extremely low but the egg changes that because it makes it a lot easier for you to get early two-star epics and then it kind of keeps your health safe while you're holding these epics as long as you get one of them to two-star. So um, I kind of like the strange egg. I think it makes things interesting. It opens up the um, variety of comps that people can go for. Okay, so here are three builds that I think could be pretty successful in the new meta and I will go through them from top to bottom and explain why I think they can do well. Okay. So, uh, first one is Warrior Beast. It's already popular. Basically, the difference that we're making here is that we are going to mix in the Warlock. And actually, I'm going to choose is the new Shadow Devil and the Desperate Doctor. The Desperate Doctor, you would already sometimes mix into six Warriors so that your Berserker could um, have that increased attack speed. However, a lot of times I would even leave that out because there's just better things um, like Medusa's, your Storm Shamans, to put in there. But um, now I think you could put it in because you can get that Warlock synergy. Um, another thing before is the reason you wouldn't really do that is for you to get 6 Warrior plus Warlock synergy, you had to have a minimum of level 9. You needed to have 9 slots open for heroes on the board. So that just kind of put it out of reach as being a common build, right? Because you, you can't count on getting to level 9 every game. That's why people tend to uh, target 8 uh, hero builds and so I think this is really cool now this is one comp that benefits from the warlock change and the reason I'm going with shadow devil is I think shadow devil will be amazing in this because he's bringing that aoe uh, magic damage to the comp of these uh, melee damage dealers and then the other thing about this is the average cost is not bad 2.625 uh, average cost matters because it's how how like the way that I look at it is this it's how likely am I to get it to two stars am I right and how likely am I to be able to get some things to three stars so as an example we introduced a one cost unit in Tusker then you have three different two cost units two three cost units and two epics right so it's a little high end because of the two epics 
but at the same time you have a lot of two costs in it which you can have a high likelihood of upgrading and they're impactful two costs right so um and they also leave you a lot of flexibility so if you have the swordsman you can introduce the storm shaman if you have the uh, abyssal guard you can in introduce a tide hunter or a siren and you're going to get the marine buff so they're cheap you can um, upgrade this comp to 9 and 10 because of them. So anyways, that, that's the first one I like. The, the next one I like is uh, completely new, right? So the other one, we're just making a minor modification to something that exists. This one's completely new. The reason why is because the new hero, uh, Shining Archer, is a uh, Hunter Feather. So the reason I say it opens a completely, completely new option is that now you can actually go 3 Hunter with your six feather synergy. Um, and in this case, you can go six hunter with a three uh, feather synergy. So I, I think I, I really enjoy the add of this type of a hero because it makes it, it opens up a lot of new things. So anyways, once again, uh, this one's kind of higher cost than I really like because, because it has the two epics and it has three, uh, three cost units also. So the point I wanna make out of this is this build is kind of more ideal but you can make much cheaper versions of it because you can substitute in light blade knights um you can substitute in the other assassins like shining assassin uh shadow crawler so this is a very flexible base comp that you can mess around with quite a bit um another thing is you can easily upgrade it just like you can upgrade warriors so for instance if you only have a two-star e-ranger and later in the game you end up getting a tide hunter or you get one of the other marksmen that you would like to add in you can do that so um i think this will be a fun um a fun base build that you can play around with and take in a lot of different ways and one other note i will say is you heard me mention you can now go six feather with three hunters right and still have that feather synergy so basically you'll be switching out the assassins that were we standardly used to run three assassins with feather now you can run uh the feather with the three hunters so that's another thing to play around with okay so the last build is divinity warlock mage once again this isn't new but it is new in the way that i think is going to be a very nice way to take this build and this i think stands a chance of being the most successful build out of the three and the reason why is it has a very low cost okay so if you lose streak this would be a great candidate of a build you could lose streak into because you can actually build this out at level seven so the current way because of the warlock changes you can have divinity two warlock three mage on a seven person comp which means if you lose streak right and you build up that 50 gold economy you can get to level seven very quickly uh, by let's say round 16 something like that and then you can just start spending all that gold to reroll till you get the entire base seven man team to two stars at least and some of them you might even be able to take to three stars just because of how cheap the heroes are um, so I think this is something that could end up being very, very strong starting build. And then you can upgrade it when you grab Medusas, when you grab Star Storm Shamans, when you get to level nine, you start getting legendaries. So, um, honestly, this is the comp that I'm most excited to try out in the new season. Um, some other notes I want to make are... How are these builds going to interact with the current existing meta, right? I don't think um, all the meta builds are gonna die out, but I think there are gonna be a lot of changes. And the reason is this, six hunters I predict to be OP. I'm almost positive 600 teams are gonna be super OP, um, very strong. So what that means is hunters are gonna become extremely contested, okay? So like this 600 build that I showed you, the likelihood of you getting this build and getting all your uh, hunters to multiple stars is very unlikely. It's not a build I would try to force. It's not, if you're the type of player who only wants to do one thing every game, I would not go for that this build, right? On the other hand, the Divinity build, I think is so great because it's using things that aren't really gonna be contested outside of this build, okay? So Divinity builds will contest you for the thing showing. The Hell Knight could be contested, by night comps but i have a feeling night comps are going to kind of scale back because they did get the nerf and then i already didn't think they were a top tier uh build 
And the other thing is, you can have a lot of replacements for Hell Knight, right? So you could go for Doom, it's just he's an epic, but you sometimes you luck into that early Doom, right? You can go for some of the other demons. For instance, you could go for a Fallen Witcher, which is another... It's a really strong piece, but it's just not that popular. So there's... I feel like the last build is not really going to be contested like the first two, right? The top one, and the reason I didn't even mention Six Warrior Beast, is it's so contested. It's like the most popular build, right? And finally, the last note I'm going to say is, once again, that's why I think the bottom build is going to do the best, is because it counters the warrior, right? Because it, it just has that magic damage, and it has enough tankiness uh, to let the mages cast their ultimates multiple times, so it will do well against Hunter, it, and it's just so flexible. You can run it when you're ahead, you can run it when you're behind, and yeah, just everything. Anyways, I'm going to stop rambling on. I want to cut the video there. I hope you all enjoy this. Uh, this is a new format. My plan is to do this every time they drop a new update. I'll give you my thoughts on the patch. I'll give you some builds to play around with. Um, so please let me know what you think in the comments. Give me your feedback and let me know if there's anything you'd like me to add in the next iteration of this. But anyways, take care. Have a great day and I'll see you all tomorrow.